What's happening, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Mom and Papa Joe. Today on the menu is something totally different. Several of you have asked me about transferring some of my outdoor recipes, some of my pit recipes, grill recipes, uh, to the oven or stovetop. Too easy. Today we're going to be doing a spare rib in the oven. Some baked spare ribs, and they're going to be banging. Let's get right into it. Today we're going to be working with a beautiful rack of... Uh, St. Louis Smithfield Spare Ribs. I'm gonna take these to the sink, get them cleaned up. There's this beautiful rack of spare ribs, man. Nicely marbled. Folks, if you don't know what to look for when you get to the supermarket or the butcher shop, man, you're looking for uh, spare ribs with this fine veins of uh, marbling, of fat mixed into the uh, pink muscle. It's going to make for a juicy, juicy, uh, end product. We're going to be working to get out some of this heavy fat that's right here. It's not going to render very well. A nice sharp knife. Here we've got this silver skin and some fat. We're going to get under that and just work to clean that up. We'll probably be chopping off one bone from this end and one from that end. You see we've got some looseness here. So here goes that one bone. And we're not going to trash this. We're going to use this shortly. What's left of this skirt. So folks, this is a uh, already St. Louis uh, rack of ribs. St. Louis means that the backside has been removed. So St. Louis is a cut. It's not a type of rib. And you pay extra in the supermarket or in a butcher shop to have that butcher just remove this. I'm going to take one bone. I like good clean lines, so I'm just gonna trim this up just a little bit. Last thing I wanna do is remove the membrane. There are two membranes uh, on the back of a rack of ribs. Uh, the first one, I should say, is clearly visible. Uh, you just wanna lift up on an edge, create an edge, or you could use something blunt to create just a little lip that you can get under. But if you're fortunate, you can get most of it up in one pull. And you don't have to remove this. Sometimes it doesn't cook out and it can get a little chewy, but most often than not, you're not gonna even recognize that it's there. And we are going to get to seasoning. Uh, so today we're gonna be rocking my favorite, man, uh, Uncle Steve Spicy R. And a little uh, cracked black pepper. And man, I'm going to be, I, I just ran across this from McDonald's. This is the uh, the honey mustard. Uh, I'm going to use this as my binder today. Let's see what gives. I'm going to start on the back side. We don't need a whole lot. Then we want a nice even sprinkle of this coarse cracked pepper. This is 16 mesh. This is going to be an awesome recipe for those of you in apartments or those of you uh, that don't have grills. Uh, those of you who may not have a covered area in your backyard and it's raining on a given weekend, the only thing missing from these ribs is going to be smoke. But everything else, I guarantee you, everything else is going to be there. Flip and we're gonna do the same thing on our meat side. Folks, you could use the seasoning of your choice, but man, this spicy oil really brings a nice color. We're gonna let this sit. A couple of uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so to completely sweat in. Uh, meanwhile, our oven is going to be preheated to 275. And one of the things you always have to do once you've got your ribs ready to go into the pit or the oven or whatever the case might be, make sure you position it, then push both ends together. What it does is thickens. It thickens and evens up your rack of rib so that you get in an even cook. We're going in on one of the middle racks, second from the top. We're gonna to be looking at two and a half to three hours uncovered. This is the rib trimming. In this pot, I've got one and a half cups of plain water. So in with the little bit of rib trimming from that rack, I'm gonna make a bit of a stock. I've got one whole crushed garlic clove, and a little piece of onion, a little Uncle Steve, and I am going to bring this to a boil on the stove. 
Once it reaches the boil, I'm turning it down to a simmer and I'm just gonna let this cook uncovered for as long as it takes to get down to about a half a cup. All right, we are right at one hour and 45 minutes. Right now, we've got a little moisture on there, man. We're gonna hit them with just a little bit of, I can't believe it's not butter. And what we're doing right now is just working on our color. Usually when you see oven ribs, people tend to color the sauce. But I am looking to get some color on this meat, on this rub. So we're back in the oven for maybe another uh, 15 to 20 minutes. I have cooked down this broth slash stock that I made mine down to probably less than a half a cup and it is totally delicious. All right, here we are, folks. I want to soak up some of this oil down with my rack and some of that stock that we created all in. We're just going to wrap this tightly. Got a huge tear right here. So I got to get a new piece of foil and our steaming liquid. And we're going right back into the oven for 45 minutes or so. We're 50 minutes wrapped, five zero. And folks, when I push in between the bones and I get the feeling that if I put just a little bit of pressure I can poke through, I know I'm good to go. First thing I wanna do is to see how much liquid I've got left in there. All right, so what I've got here is a quarter cup of that foil juice. Uh, it was pretty concentrated, delicious. I added just a hair of water uh, to bring it to a full quarter cup. And I'm gonna come in here with some Texas pepper jelly, peach, ma uh, peach habanero. And I am going to add about three tablespoons and just heat it up. That way it flows nice. All right, so our glaze is nice and hot. We're gonna glaze both sides because we want both sides to taste good. Oh yes. And come back and flip. We've cranked our oven up to 300 and we're just gonna set this glaze for about uh, five, 10 minutes max. All right, folks. So 10 minutes set the glaze and then we gave it about five minutes to rest. So let's just go in here, man, and see what we've got. Uh, let's see what kind of bones we're looking at. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, beautiful. Nice little shine to them, man. Those oven ribs, man, absolutely beautiful. Look at that texture. Uh, ten, ooh, I'm, I'm not trying to squeeze, but that texture just beautiful. And this is not falling off the bones. It's holding together, but I guarantee you it is tender. And I'm just gonna pinch, oh yeah. Just, man, mm, mm, mm. Oh my goodness, that is delicious. Take a bite of that, mama. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's good. Folks, by looking at these, man, you could not tell uh, their oven. Somebody could easily be full. Now, when you taste them and you miss the smoke, uh, you will definitely know that they weren't done on a smoker. So there we are, folks, another simple cook, man. This time, oven ribs. Uh, right, uh, right around three and a half, under three and a half hours. Anybody can do this. I want to thank you guys for hanging out with Mom and Papa Joe's as usual, man. We really appreciate you stopping in. Uh, be on the lookout for another video coming very soon, as well as our Thursday night live stream. We'd love to have you there. In the meantime, Mom and I want you guys to take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and we'll see you when we see you. Holler!